I found a secret GPU that you can buy that's a great value and nobody's talking about it. Oh, hello there. How you doing? Thanks to Weeb here. Thanks for clicking on the video today. I don't usually do this right off the start, but if you could subscribe if you like the video, <laughs> that would be cool. Really cool. Thanks, buddy. So I, I just got a GPU in the mail. I bought this thing and I didn't really know what to expect because pretty much nobody's talking about it. It's flying under the radar and it's actually a pretty good value. In 2022, the fact that this thing exists and you could buy it and it's actually affordable, <laughs> seriously. Let's not waste any time and we'll get into this box. Yeah, some of you might have guessed what this is. This is the NVIDIA T400. So this looks almost exactly the same as the T600 because it's like the little brother to the four gigabyte NVIDIA T600, which I reviewed. The video for that is linked in the description below. And I did another video where I calculated the value of the T600 compared to a GTX 1650 and a 1050 Ti video link below. But if you've seen my T600 videos, then you'll know that I think very highly of that card. It's a great little card for the price. I actually made the case that it's the best value new GPU that you could buy right now in this market, in this bleak dystopian future we live in, where GPUs are being traded for canned goods and toilet paper to stock up for the COVID Ethereum zombie apocalypse. The only GPUs you can find at reasonable prices are the ones that fly under the radar. The ones that the miners and scalpers haven't set their sights on. Yet. The T600 was one of those, but because of famous YouTubers like me drawing attention to them, the, the stock is starting to dry up. I'm almost reluctant to make this video, to be honest, but I really want you to know about it. So you have to promise me that you'll keep this our little secret, okay? This T400 is still in stock where I live in Canada, and while I'm not expecting it to perform as good as the T600, you have to keep in mind the price. This T400 costs a little over $100. It's like $105. So what does a $100-ish dollar GPU get you in 2022? Well, it gets you some games. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, you can game on this card, and it does a fine job gaming. Yeah, you're not gonna crank the settings up to max and get 60 FPS on modern games. You'd be lucky to play at 1080p at anything less than five years old, but that doesn't mean that this won't work for you if you need an entry-level card that will get you up on gaming on a budget, because entry-level cards are basically non-existent right now. Why is that? Well, I suspect it's because the miners and scalpers are buying up all the flagship cards and since hung hungry gamers can't get an affordable mid-range cards that lots of them are buying up the entry-level cards just so they could get something that they could game on. You know, cards like the GT 1030 and the 1050 Ti, the 1650 or like the RX 550 or 560. These are cards that aren't supposed to be expensive that can play games at medium or low settings, which true gamers are totally cool with. I did a video on that topic. Entry level cards for true gamers. There's a video link in the description below. But now the stock of the entry level cards has been all used up and nobody can even get affordable cards anymore. Even at the low end. These days you'd be lucky to find a GT 1030 and it'll be 125 bucks when it should cost less than 90. So what can we do? Well, I'll tell you what you could do. You can subscribe to TechDweeb for more great tips, tricks, and budget PC gaming content because I've got your back. I want you to get GPUs that you could game on just as much as you do. Cause we're all gamers, right? We're in this together, guys. The more GPUs that get into the hands of gamers, the more people there are in the world playing games and having fun, rather than going out gallivanting around town, breaking the rules, jaywalking, stealing pies from windowsills, and murdering puppies. Well, this video is taking a dark turn. Sorry for ranting. I guess I better show you guys some more gameplay, huh? In Red Dead 2, this T600 is getting an average of 37 FPS at two thirds of 1080p, which is pretty much 900p, with a medium low settings mix. Yes, I know it's not as impressive as running the game in HD resolution with max settings, but you tell me, I dare you. You tell me where you could find a new GPU that will offer this performance for $100. You can't, can you? No, you can't, so shut up. <laughs> Sorry for yelling. But Red Dead 2 is totally playable at this resolution with these settings. As you can see, it looks great. The FPS is very consistent and it feels smooth and responsive. The gameplay's fine. I would play like this, even at 37 FPS. And up for $100 in 2022, this is really solid performance from the T400 in Red Dead 2. Really solid. Get the hell out of here right now! Uh, 
The Witcher 3 lets us up the settings to 900p medium. Again, we're getting in the ballpark of 43 FPS, and the game looks good here. Of course, you could get higher FPS if you lower the resolution or the detail, but that goes for all the games I'm showing you. It's a really beautiful game, so I, I think sacrificing some FPS to get the settings a bit higher is preferred, as long as you can keep it playable. This is the sweet spot I found, where the game looks great, feels great, and it plays great on a controller. This game is just so good. To, to be able to play it and have it look this good on a budget entry-level GPU that's available at a good bargain, uh, that's pretty cool these days if you ask me. And Geralt, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Will you run away from home with me? There's something about playing on a controller that's more forgiving at lower FPS. For first-person shooter games, or any game I play with a mouse and keyboard, I usually prefer to lower the settings to get higher FPS. In, in Battlefield 1, we're getting a solid 62 FPS at 900p low settings. And the game looks good like this. I was actually really impressed when I first started it up. Again, keep in mind the price. This is a $100 card in 2022. And it plays games like this? That's freaking awesome. This is literally my first time testing Battlefield 1 on a low-end card, and I was really surprised at how good it looks at low settings and how well it runs. You can up the resolution if you are okay sacrificing a few FPS, but I think 900p is going to be a theme for this card. 900p, medium or low, is, is going to be the sweet spot for most modern games. My favorite game to benchmark is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. For lots of reasons, most of which have nothing to do with the fact that I have a crush on Laura Croft and look for any excuse to watch her jump around and hang from ropes. We're running at 1080p with 75% resolution scale, which is 900p, low settings, but with high textures because this game runs fine on a 2 gigabyte card with high textures, which I suspect has to do with the way it streams textures and this card's much faster GDDDR6 VRAM, getting an average of 35 FPS. I think this performance here is right where I'd expect this card to land. This card costs about 60% of the price of the T600, and we're getting about 60% of the performance. Maybe a bit more now that I think about it. Actually, I'm, I'm really curious to see how this T400 compares to the T600. Side by side, head to head. Is that a video you'd like to see? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I also think it would be interesting to see how it does against the GT 1030, which is more expensive right now, but it's in the same price category, I suppose. I, I suspect this T400 will blow it away. Uh, speaking of blowing it away, here is GTA 5. Of course, no GPU review would be complete without it. Running at 1080p normal settings, which is this game's low settings. As you can see, the game looks great. GTA 5 is sort of like your standard candle for game performance. Uh, do, do you know what that means? Standard candle? See, a long time ago when a man would go out to sea to go fishing or whaling or whatever, his wife would light a candle in the window so that he could find his way home. The problem was that he couldn't tell how far away he was from shore because he would see the candle light, and if it was dim, he didn't know if it was dim because he was really far out to sea or if it was dim because the candle itself was a dinky little wimp of a candle and wasn't very bright. So they came up with the idea of standard candles, where a standard candle would burn with the same size flame and give off the same brightness, and that way the sailors could tell how far they were from shore based on how bright the candle was. So there you go, that's what a standard candle is. Well, GTA 5 is like our game benchmark standard candle. It's a super well-optimized game, it runs on anything, and it's consistent. So if you know GTA 5 gives you 70 FPS on a T400, you can make sense of that because you're familiar with how it performs on other cars. Parts. Pretty much everyone reviewing GPUs does a test in GTA 5, and it's probably the most benchmarked game out there if you think about it. So it gives you a feel for how one card compares to another. And since we're getting 70 FPS at 1080p normal settings, that should tell you where this card lands in the low end GPU hierarchy.
I wanted to end on a high note, so here's some Horizon Zero Dawn. This sort of game is a perfect use case for the T400 because it's a game that I and probably most people would play with a controller. You know, those third person action games, especially console ports, they're made with a controller in mind and when you play with a controller, you're a bit more forgiving on the FPS, which means that games that are very demanding like this one will run fine on lower end cards as long as you're comfortable playing at 30 or 40 FPS. We're getting more than that here though. We're getting 43 FPS and that's because I enabled the built-in FSR for this game. It looks really, really good. It gives us a huge boost in FPS and balanced FSR pretty much looks like native 1080p while you're playing. I keep in mind that this is a PS4 game, so the fact that you can run a PS4 game, a 1080p, on a $100 card, yeah, FSR is a big help to us budget gamers. Thanks, AMD. Oh, I don't forget that this is a low profile card that, that's only one single slot, so this will fit in any PC, even those little small form factor optiplexes or whatever. Low profile cards usually carry a premium. The low profile GTX 1050 Ti and the 1650 were each like $50 more than the full size versions. And here's another nice surprise. Look at the box. Three freaking display board adapters. Good ones too. These are like $10 each on Amazon. How? How can a $100 card perform this good and also be low profile and come with all the brackets and three display port adapters? This is unbelievable. And what's more unbelievable is that nobody is talking about it. The T400 has like three videos on YouTube. My man, Random Gaming in HD, he made a video about this, but he just made the one. I feel like more people should be talking about this T series. The T600 is getting some love, but what about the T400? It's so good for the price. Are you kidding me? How can this card perform this well for $100? In 2022, when GPUs are worth more than their weight in Ethereum, then this card exists. It is available. It is affordable. This makes no sense. Am I dreaming? Are you dreaming? Is, is this Dream Tech Dweeb talking to you through Dream YouTube and you're going to wake up and it turns out the T400 doesn't actually exist or it's not in stock or it's way overpriced? I hope not, for both of our sakes. And that brings us to the end. Please let me know in the comments below. Am, am I wrong? Is, is this T400 as great a value as I think it is? I feel like it's pretty great, but I want to know what you think. I really want to do some uh, emulation videos on these budget GPUs. The T400 and the T600 and the 3000G. Stay tuned for those. Or if there's anything you want me to test with this card, let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or the thumbs down button if you didn't like it for some reason. Share this video with anyone you think would enjoy it. Subscribe for more videos like this. As always, I'm Tech Dweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.